Good morning, Good everyone, morning. and welcome to our worship at Deckridge Baptist Church. Um, how wonderful it is to be here. Uh, Sheena and I feel we have returned to our uh, new normal in that we're back here leading worship from home uh, rather than elsewhere. But we have some words that I hope will be to us a call to worship. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. What wonderful words. And I want to just uh, mention how blessed we have been through the difficulties of these past weeks. And we are so conscious that not only has God been our refuge and strength, but because of your prayers and your support and your sympathy, um, we have really been richly blessed. And we want to thank you for that. We've been conscious of God's help. Uh, during the occasion of my mother's death. I want to thank you too for prayer uh, in anticipation of Ross and Ashley's wedding that I can report went very well and we were all pleased. But of course life is something of a roller coaster and this week we've had the funeral service where we said our final farewell to Betty Anderson. And so we are constantly in need of the God who is our refuge and strength in time of trouble. And we thank you for your prayers and hope that you are blessed through the praying of the whole congregation and ourselves in relation to the difficulties and challenges that each of us face. And so we're going to turn now uh, to intercessory prayer and we'll continue on the theme of uh, members of the church. I want us all to remember if we can, Doreen uh, Avery, uh, Doreen, uh, to my surprise, uh, I discovered, has had a fall and has been to hospital uh, and been uh, mended somewhat and returned home and is now convalescing. Uh, she's had a broken hip, but it seems to have been a successful operation and we just want to remember Doreen. We remember to Doreen Drever because Doreen um, is having falls uh, inside and outside and is waiting on the result of some tests. And so we want to pray for her. And of course, Donna, um, she visits St. John's three times a week and is anticipating her third session of chemotherapy. And again, the results of some tests. So we want to remember them. We want to remember, of course, Betty Anderson's family. I think of Betty in the glory looking down upon us and, and, and wanting us to just remember the whole family and be there to support them. So we're going to pray for John and uh, David and Janice, uh, for, for Ewan and Murray and Julia and Rachel. There I remembered all the names. And Roy. Oh, and Roy, of course. <laughs> Thank you, Sheena. And Roy, David's brother. So we're going to remember the whole family and just remember each other um, uh, at this challenging time. So let's pray. Our Father God, we thank you for the gift of prayer. We thank you that because the Lord Jesus has died and then risen and ascended into the glory as our great high priest, we can come into your presence. And the writer of scripture tells us, even with confidence and with boldness, we can come in his name and we know that you hear us. So we thank you for this wonderful gift. We come, Lord, um, Remembering, first of all, the wider world. I want to just concentrate, I think, today um, on the nation of Australia, although it's virtually a continent. We know that it is having something of a real flare-up of the coronavirus. Um, we know that uh, Queensland, for example, is in complete lockdown, with, with none able to leave or others able to go there. And so we just remember Australia at this moment. We pray, Lord, for those that govern and lead. We pray for those working in the health services, doctors, nurses, and all those that give their, their time sacrificially uh, to, to helping those that are suffering. We pray for the suffering, the families of the suffering. And we ask, Lord, that you will look upon that nation and be merciful toward it. But we're conscious, Lord, that um, our whole world is suffering at the moment. Something, either of the beginnings of a resurgence or the fear of a resurgence. And so we just pray that you will look upon us 
be merciful toward us and draw near and be our help and strength in this time of trouble. We think too of our own nation. We know there are parts of England, Lord, where um, the coronavirus statistics at the moment are not looking particularly good. Um, but we pray for them and again ask, Lord, that you will act on our behalf. We pray too at this time that you will bless and anoint your people as we seek to speak God's word into this situation. We want to be used by you during this time and be instruments in your hands, whether it's to be your voice among our family members and friends or wherever. We pray for your help and anointing and leading. Father, we uh, do pray uh, for Doreen Drever and pray that uh, the test results will expose the problem behind the falls and that she will receive the help she needs. We pray too, as we always do, for Donna. And we know this week is fairly critical in terms again of uh, test results, but we ask your blessing and anointing upon Donna and pray that you will protect her and keep her. Heavenly Father, we pray too for uh, Doreen Avery and we thank you for the way in which uh, the Western General have been able to, to, to help her Lord with the broken hip and our prayer is it will continue to heal and that she will find herself uh, recovering increasingly uh, back to her normal self. So we pray for Doreen. Heavenly Father, we pray for the Anderson family. We thank you so much for the gift of Betty having been amongst us. She was such an inspiration and a hard-working lady and one in whom your spirit clearly dwelt. And so we thank you for Betty, for her warmth and encouragement and the significant part she's played in church life. But we pray for John and we pray uh, for David and Janice and the rest of the family. We pray for Roy too. And we ask, Lord, that they may know your peace at this time, that they, um, although grieving, will discover that they're grieving but not despairing because they know that Betty is with you in the glory and we rejoice in that hope. Heavenly Father, we ask that you remain with us during this time of worship and that you will be honoured and glorified in all that we uh, silently sing in our hearts and all that we say and pray and hear. Be glorified in us and through us, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, what I want to do is uh, uh, ask Sheena to, to read for us. She's going to read 1 Samuel, and the verses are... Um, 1 Samuel, chapter 1, and it's verses 21 to 28. Now, the last time we looked at this chapter, we were introduced to Hannah and the anguish of childlessness that brought her to the place of, of despair and we see it expressed in the prayer that, that uh, uh, Eli heard and thought was nonsense and felt, in fact, she was drunk. But then the Lord answered that prayer uh, and the cloud of childlessness was lifted and Samuel was born. Uh, but of course, Hannah vowed that if she had this child, she would hand him over to the Lord for service at the temple. And so this reading is all about Hannah dedicating Samuel at the temple. And so Sheena. When the man Elkanah went up with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfil his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, After the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. Do what seems best to you, Elkanah, her husband told her. Stay here until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord make good his word. So the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When they had slaughtered the bull, they brought the boy to Eli, and she said to him, As surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you, praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. 
So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he shall be given over to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. Well, there we go. We'll return and consider uh, those words in just a moment. Uh, but now we're going to return to our praise. <laughs> 